Rooftoppers, Chapter 8. The plan Sophie and Charles made was, of necessity, simple. Sophie wrote it out on a scrap of paper. Number one, find Rue Charlemagne. Number two, was blank. Sophie's pen hesitated over two, then she drew a large question mark. She underlined it in red ink and put the list in her pocket and went to find Charles. Charles' room was nice, though you could not call it smart. There were two spindly chairs on which a succession of bottoms had left their mark and two rugs on which a good deal of expense had been spared. Even the bedside candles looked second-hand, but the linen smelt of lavender. The wind was blowing from the river and the air was brackish. Sophie had never felt so much at home in a hotel. Usually they gave her the shivers. The hotel itself was a tall, gangly building, sandwiched between two more imposing blocks of apartments. It was cheap because, as Sophie had just discovered, there was no indoor toilet, only a wooden box in the garden. But apart from that, it was perfect. From the window, thin streets and pavements, pavement cafes wove away from them down towards the river. Sophie sat on Charles' bed and bounced. Above the bed there was a painting of a man in a beard that curled at the point. I like his beard, she said. He could use it as a paintbrush. Charles looked up, startled. What? Then he laughed. <laughs> Did you find a bathroom? Yes, we're sharing it with the family of spiders, though. And there's a bird's nest in the ceiling joist. I quite like it. Good. Shall we go and explore your room? Let me carry your case. No? Well, as you wish. Sophie's bedroom was in the attic of the hotel. There wasn't much to explore. The doorway was so small that Charles stayed outside and let her go in alone. Once she had set down her cello case, there was barely room to stand. Look, she said. The walls were covered in ink sketches, arranged higgledy-piggledy to pick up the most possible light. They were done in quick black strokes. They looked like they were fidgeting in their frames. I like these. They look French. They look like music, said Charles. He tucked his, tucked his head into his neck and peered further in. Then, no window. Skylight, said Sophie. A tiny four-poster bed was hung with white cotton at the sides and open at the top. There was a window set into the slanting roof. Looking up, Sophie realised that the reason Charles hadn't seen it immediately was that it was so thickly encrusted with bird droppings on the outside that it matched the white ceiling. Do you think it opens? she said. I can think of only one way to find out. Charles edged his way into the room and laid his newspaper on the bed. He set his feet on the newspaper and prized open the catch. The window did not open when he pushed it, nor when he jabbed at the hinge with his umbrella. Rusted hinge, he said. Easily solved. It's not painted shut, so it shouldn't be a problem. Do you think the hotel will have some oil? It's unlikely, but we'll find you some oil tomorrow. Thank you. She stood on the bed and squinted through the gaps in the pigeon mess. She could see red chimney pots and blue sky. My heart feels too large for my body, she said. It feels so familiar, Charles, and I don't know why. It does, though. Do you believe me? Paris? Yes, sort of. Maybe, but I was actually thinking the chimney pots. They look familiar, and they're such a good colour. Charles was a scholar, and scholars, he always said, are made to notice things. He must have heard in her voice how much she wanted to be alone, because he strode swiftly to the door. I'll leave you to explore. Half an hour, Sophie, and then we'll find a map and get ourselves to Rue Chalman. If it's near the river, it can't be far from here.